Have you ever noticed how Tiger Woods and Ben Hogan have that like curtailed look to the end of their follow through where they hit the shot and the arms are finishing here? I know that when I impersonate Tiger and I try and go and hit his shot, I don't do this held off little short look to the finish. Now, have you ever wondered, like I did, what are the advantages to actually doing this in your swing? What we're going to do is we're going to get into the video now and have a look at how you can apply this to your game. So guys, this isn't just exclusive to Ben Hogan and Tiger Woods. You look at the guy who just won the race to Dubai, Tommy Fleetwood, and you look at uh, Justin Rose, they both have this sort of follow through. What they're doing is they have a curtailed look to the end of the follow through, where it's finishing like this, okay? It's like a three quarter held off look to the finish. Now, what does this allow you to do? Well, it's not just taking a bit of yardage off the ball, it's actually controlling spin, Okay, so it's actually harder to put some curvature on that golf ball and it's much easier to control the distance the ball is going to go every time because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making sure that when that follow through rotation stops, the arm stops. So what you, the matching nature of this swing is the essence to all of it. So what we're looking at is that when that backswing rotation of the shoulders stops, you see that the club would stop right here. So that's sort of the look. Then into the follow through, what we'll see is when the when the shoulders finish rotated here, whoops a daisy, right there, that we can see that the arms have finished and stopped moving at the same moment. So we can see that as I finish rotating there, you can now see how my arms are still up at my shoulders and the club hasn't released or hinged. What I mean by that is the club hasn't fallen downwards and is and parallel to my ears it's still up in the air. So like, you know, at the start, you see that there's a lot of images of Ben Hogan and Tiger Woods, and you'll have seen these guys hitting these shots a lot in this manner. What it does is it allows them to hit the ball a little bit flatter so that it's not getting as much spin. And it really does allow them to control the distance the ball is going to go. Now, how can you put this into your swing? First of all, obviously you need to know that when the shoulders stop moving on both sides of the swing, you're gonna get your arms to stop. But lastly, what you then do is, Take hold of the club a little bit tighter in the last three fingers of the left hand here. Okay, what that does is if it's tighter there, it reduces the wrist hinge. So at the top, it's easier to control how far the club is going. But in the follow through, if I keep that tension in the last three fingers, you see how much easier it is for me after I make that rotational finish here, that the club has stopped moving there and everything is moving together. So effectively, the club is only moving back and through with my body movement and it's never getting extra hinge. So it's a great way for you to control distance if you're ever in between clubs. It's a great way to do it. If you want to take some spin off the ball, you can try it with your wedges. And it can also be a great way to play in the wind when you want to make sure that you aren't trying to overhit the shot because obviously if you get too much spin in the wind, that's a disaster for controlling your ball flight. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video guys and there's loads of great information in there to help you with your game. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching and talk with you again very soon.